Hello everybody, it's the doctor here, and today this is my 100th epic sword. So we're doing the epic dragon battle to commemorate this moment. I'll try not to cry. This has 915 pieces, set 9450, 8 to 14, we get the exclusive Lloyd ZX. This set is pretty epic looking. We get the Great Devourer as well as a really massive four-headed dragon, which has a lot of dragon heads, four to be exact. You can fly that guy around. You can also capture some ninjas inside the Great Devourer's mouth. There is a little snake prison as well. Pretty crazy looking battle going on. So let's go ahead and open this up, build it, and take a little chat about it. Here we have Lloyd ZX. He is the green ninja, as you can see. He has dark gunmetal gray shoulder pads, wearing the green ninja suit and a golden sword. I really like his helmet piece. It is a little bit different, as you may be able to see. It's kind of speckly and not completely painted, a silver color, but it kind of looks armored up. This figure is a little bit inaccurate. As you can tell, he is taller than he should be. He does come with his double-sided face as well as his back snake emblem. Though not entirely accurate with the show, still a cool little green ninja. Next we have Asidicus, the Venomari general fella, probably in my new favorite snake of all time. He has a really wicked head mold, spikes everywhere, fangs everywhere, dark green, comes with the Hypnobri fang blade for some reason. Nice back printing as well as front printing. Really wicked green dude. Next we have Scalador, another exclusive general to this set. First being my favorite new fig. He is also exclusive. He has the silver spikes, really wicked battle axe with a spear on the end, cool front printing, a little shield over his chest, and the black snake bottom. Next we have Cho Kun, really short little dude. He is in one other set, unless you get his spinner. Really like his head printing. Has kind of a shiny silver on his scales. Comes with a golden flail as for a weapon. Pretty cool looking short dude. Next we have Lord Garmadon. This is Lloyd Garmadon's papa and savior of pretty much everything. If you watched the show. He is wielding all four golden weapons. 
and the rest of him is similar to the, what we have seen before with his four arms. Really cool looking Lord Garmadon. Next we get a Sensei Wu figure, which kind of doesn't make sense in comparison to the show, but this set doesn't really make any sense when compared to the show anyways, so we get a Sensei Wu. And last but not least, we get Jay in his ZX form. Not really sure why we get him, because we get all four ninjas in the Ultra Sonic Raider. It would have been cool to get maybe Pythor with a closed mouth in this set, but unfortunately we just get a really, really random J. So let's go ahead and move on to the actual set. Here's the whole set all together. We get the Ultra Dragon, which is the four dragons formed together. Then we get the Great Devourer and a really random snake prison. If you watch the show at all, you might be slightly disappointed with this set because it is not entirely accurate. But if you don't really watch the show and you just really like the Ninjago or Ninjago sets, then you will probably think this is the coolest thing ever because it really is epic. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the prison since it's the most basic piece of this set. At the top, it looks like we have a little bit of an acidic fountain, which is really cool looking. It fits really nicely up there. Downward from that, we have two of the Venomari shrine type printed pieces, which are two snake heads leaking acid from their fangs. And two swords up here just to make it look a little bit more nasty. We have an extremely basic ramp here. Pretty easy build, just kind of sits there ramp up to the actual prison is quite basic as well kind of just flips up gotta move this little spider out of the way flips up and you're supposed to put sensei Wu in there even though he's supposed to be inside the great devourer belly one cool little sticker inside here is i suppose sensei Wu scratching off how many days he's been in there you just kind of throw him up in there close him up and he starts counting his days here, this back piece can swivel forward and backwards. Not exactly sure why it does that. You could, I suppose, kind of enclose another dude down in the bottom here, but that's really not where the prison is supposed to be located. So not really sure what this play feature is all about, why this swivel, swivels at all, but it does. Up here is a little trash can containing a few drops of green ooze and if you wish you can dump it all over sensei Wu by just lifting this up and down it goes not particularly sure why you want to do that but if you feel like it you can next we're going to move on to the great devourer he is very very top heavy as you can see if you push him a little bit he will fall down. He's not exactly size accurate when compared to the show, but oh well, he's more like a basilisk than the Great Devourer. Pretty cool anyways though. He looks pretty mean. He does sit up like a viper. This does open up, which you can put inside a regular minifigure. And down he does chompeth. And if you would like to be more accurate, you could just put your Sensei Wu in here. And then try to free him from the depths of the Great Devourer belly. The bottom does have quite a bit of articulation. As you can see, there are plenty of joints to make it seem like a snake. So you could have it turning in a lot of different ways. This part does not move so he is always up in his striking form a few stickers here here there are three here one here and then repeating on the other side not fun to put on and finally the very top of the devourer's face here got some really killer looking fangs the mouth more fangs here red eyes 
pretty accurate here. You may not like this detail, but I think he looks pretty cool. Anyways, pretty basic build, pretty fun to build, but he is a little bit top heavy, which might be a downfall to some. Let's go ahead and check out the Ultra Dragon. Here we have the Ultra Dragon. We get one missile, which is the squeeze and launch missiles. Really, really epic indeed. We get all four dragon heads in a new color. We get Jay's dragon, Zane's dragon, Kai's dragon, and Cole's dragon, my favorite. All four heads in a new printing. Pretty cool. Let me just say that this dragon is really ridiculously huge. He is also extremely top heavy. If you open up his wings while he's sitting down, he will have lots of trouble standing up properly just because his head, or foreheads rather, are just really, really massive. As you can see, the weight kind of gets his joints to buckle a little bit and he has trouble standing up on these tiny little legs. Here on the back he has a really epic whipping tail. This is probably the coolest dragon tail out of all. Lots of spikes in white and green. A very clear green. Pretty awesome looking tail. His back legs are completely stationary other than the fact that his foot rotates a little bit. He has extremely cool wings that can flap when you lift this middle piece here. Pretty cool little play feature. Really wicked looking wings. None of them really move around too much except for these two pieces which are pretty fragile so you're probably just going to want to leave it in this motion. There are claws but they are quite small for this huge youngest dragon. Though not entirely show accurate, you can place Lloyd up here, kind of in close him in with those shotguns, now seatbelts. Who doesn't want shotgun seatbelts? Those seem incredibly safe, but he can ride on the Ultra Dragon, if you wish. I'm going to kind of try to demonstrate the wing flapping feature. You just kind of lift here, but you want to be careful as you can see, I just popped off Lloyd's cockpit area, so you just kind of want to lift here, and his wings do lift up. From the back, you just lift this lever right here, and the wings will flap. Not really sure how this guy flies, he is rather huge, he must be kind of like a bumblebee. So there are some ups and downs to this set. One down being, it's not entirely show accurate, and both the creatures are incredibly top heavy, especially with the four-headed dragon. His legs are just not strong enough to keep his big old head off the ground. You gotta keep it pretty stationary in order for his heads to be up. And if you give this guy a little push whatsoever, he is down for the count. The snake prison is incredibly random. Though cool, it is completely random when compared to the shell. So if you take this set away from the shell and don't try to compare it, then you will probably think this set is awesome. It truly is an epic battle between a huge snake and a huge dragon trying to save Sensei Wu. We do get a few exclusive figures if you don't count their spinner sets like Lloyd and the two snake generals. We get all four golden weapons yet again in this set and it is actually pretty fun to play with. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this set a build it. Epic! Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys got to see what you guys wanted to see out of the set. This is my 100th episode. So thank you guys for joining me yet again. Thank you so much. Hope you guys liked it. 
and I will catch you guys another time.